flat rains. That's old news. Let's make them pop. Playing a game is about being fully immersed in a rich, impossible world. You want a terrain to feel so real, you could almost reach out and touch it. And when you're building your portfolio, that's exactly the kind of detail that makes your work stand out. Today, I'll show you how to easily add real 3D displacement to your landscapes in Unreal Engine 5.4 using Nanite and Megascan libraries from Fab. No more pretending, your surfaces will have real depth and detail. If you want more tutorials like this, tricks, and career advice to help you break into the gaming industry, hit that subscribe button. And if you are ready to go further, check the link in the description or visit Wulun.com to learn about the Game Creator Accelerator, a lifetime mentorship where you will build your first project while learning how to stand out on social media, find job opportunities, and carve your own independent path in this competitive field. All right? Let's dive into Unreal and bring those landscapes to life. Before getting into the details of these steps, let's create a project in Unreal. In my case, this is Unreal 5 for games, third person. You can set the starter content and a name for this project. Step one, let's create a material with displacement. First, I'm going to the content folder, create a folder for this project called game and inside a folder named materials. Open the folder, right click, and select the option of a material. Let's name this material M Mat Displaced. And open this material. To have displacement in a material, you need a parameter that you can find here at the moment named displacement. Let's fix that. Back to the third person, right click on your project, and look for Show in Explorer. Go a folder up and you will see this one named config. And inside config you have a file named defaultengine.ini. Double click to open it. Inside that file, look for the section named renderer settings. You can place the next two lines in any place inside this section. I'm going to add it after this true. These are the two lines you will add. R nanite allow tessellation equals one and R nanite tessellation equals one. Don't worry, I'm going to add it in the description. Now save and close. In order to these changes to apply to your project, first save all in your project, close it, and then reopen it. Now you can see that in the material we created, we have this parameter named displacement. But also, this parameter is, at this moment, disabled. Don't worry, we're going to handle that in a second. Go back to the third person and look on Edit, Plugins, and search Nanite Displaced Mesh. Check and restart your project. Close the plugin windows. And now, finally, to enable this parameter of displacement, look in the details after selecting the material Enable tessellation, this parameter, and check. Now you have the displacement enable. Apply and save your material. The step two is import a texture from Fab. Click on Fab and let's look for a texture name Gauched Rock Cliff. You can also filter by the price of free. Select this one called Gouch Rock Cliff. And here I want to tell you something very important for the use of textures from the Fab for Unreal 4.5 and I'm sorry, for Unreal 5.4 and Unreal 5.5. You have to the right several qualities for this uh, texture. First, I'm going to download the medium quality and add it to the project. Back to Fab. And now I'm going to select the high quality and add it to the project as well. Here in our assets, you have the high and the medium quality. If you click the medium quality, you have only three, uh, you have only three textures for assets. But if you hit the high, you have four textures. The importance of this is that in the medium, you don't have this texture that finish with an H. 
that is the texture that you will use to define the parameter of the displacement. That's why you can't use materials with textures that you import in front fab if they are of medium quality. You only have the option to use high quality textures. Let's close this, go to the third person. And now you can also remove the medium quality folder because we are not going to use this texture. But in any case, I'm going to leave it for a second. Back to the material, control and space. Let's look for the materials on fab, the high quality. Now I'm going to select all this one by clicking the first one, shift and clicking the last one and dragging into the material. The first texture we're going to connect and you see from the description that it finished with a B, it is related to the base color. So let's connect the RGB pin to the base color. The second finish with an end. That means that it is a normal map. So you can select this texture and connect it to the normal. The next one is the ORM. The importance of this uh, texture is that by saying ORM is telling you the corresponding parameters for the channel R, G, and B. The O refers to occlusion. So let's go to the occlusion, ambient occlusion here, and the R will be connected to the occlusion because it is the first one. The second is R. R refers to roughness. So green will be connected to roughness because it's the second element of this. Let's call it the vector. And the M, which refers to metallic, will be connected from B to the metallic parameter. That's great. And finally, we have the texture related to the displacement. Now, if we check the texture of the displacement, it only has a parameter called H, which refers to height, the displacement in, in height. So we are not going to connect the RGB, but we're going to connect the first pin, which is the R from right, from R, sorry, to displacement. Now apply and save. Back to the third person map, let's create a new map for our project. File, new level. I will pick the open world and create. Let's save the map. And now we're going to the third step, which is update landscape and material. Let's find where our player will start. Select the landscape here on the outliner and look in the details for material. You can see at this moment that the landscape has a default material. You can reset it here as well. Now I'm going to add the material that we created a moment ago. So drag your material to the box of landscape and material and give it some time. If you move your camera down through the, to the material, you will see that it doesn't have displacement. It looks like 3D from the top, but when you go close to the surface, you see that there is no displacement at all. This is exactly what we're going to change in a second. But before we get to this key part of the tutorial, I want to pause for a second and talk to you, the aspiring game creator. Why do so many passionate developers give up? It's not because they lack talent. It's because they waste time jumping from course to course with no real plan and no clear strategy to break into the industry. The truth is, technical skills alone aren't enough. Without a clear path, all that passion quickly turns into frustration. That's exactly why I created the Game Creator Accelerator. It is a lifetime mentorship designed not just to teach you how to build your first project, but to help you stand out, build your presence online, and create real opportunities, whether you're looking for a job or starting your own studio. 
And yes, it's lifetime access with just one single payment. No subscriptions, no hidden fees. Don't keep guessing. While others are still hoping, you could already be building with someone guiding you who's been there. Visit willing.com or check the description. Subscribe on the site and let's book your one-on-one -on -one session. Having the material selected, let's look for Nanite. If the parameter that says Enable Nanite, click it to enable it. Now go back to the material. In fact, just because I want you to see how this will extend, click on the button that says Build Data once you select Landscape inside a Nanite section and give it some time. Now you can see this crazy displacement of the material. We want to control that. How we're going to do it? Well, we go back to our material, select the node of the material, and look in details for displacement. Open this section and you have a magnitude and have center. Right now the magnitude is too big. Let's try something like 0.1. Apply, save, and let's go back to the map. Now you see a more <laughs> decent displacement. We see that now the surface is not just plain, it is 3D. And this effect is created by the displacement. Now, if we play our game, probably the surface looks like too repetitive at this moment. So what we'll do is to add a last change on the material we created. And with this step, we go to the last one, which is adjust scale. Right click on your material and look for landscape chord and pick this one named landscape layer chords. Connector to all your texture nodes in the UVs. Select the landscape chords, clean this, and open the material expression landscape layers coordinates. One of the parameters is the mapping scale. So now we can start playing with this scale. For you to have a notion of how this is going to impact our design, let's move it to one side and change this life. Let's set the mapping scale instead of 0 to 4. And look what is going to happen here to the left. Apply. And there you go. We have a bigger map. Excellent. And now if you want to start playing with the other parameters of your material, let's select the material. Look for the displacement. And one magnitude that I could recommend uh, in this case, it, it depends of the texture that you added, could be 0.2. Let's apply, save, and test your game. Here you have a surface with displacement which creates that sense of 3D. Knowing this process will enhance the look and feel and immersiveness experience of your levels and maps. I love to hear from you. Drop a comment and share if this video was useful, share your questions and what you're planning to do with this knowledge. If this video brought you value, give it a like, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss out on more Unreal Engine tips, tutorials and career recommendations. If you want to take a step further and have me at your side to help you transit this adventure, visit woolen.com to learn more about the Game Creator Accelerator. Subscribe and let's have a one-on-one -on -one chat. And don't forget to check our video about create a forest in Unreal Engine and continue this adventure. Until next time, keep creating, keep sharing, and most importantly, keep dreaming big. See you soon, my fellow creators.